Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to episode seven of the Little Bean and Me podcast. This is a little podcast, a video podcast about crocheting, yarn dyeing, kind of knitting, maybe some spinning, um, and just general craftiness and having fun doing what you love. So I am back here with you for another episode, another week. It's Tuesday, it's filming day, and I'm super excited because I have a ton of questions. I have some new acquisitions that I'm very excited to share, and I have some prizes for our crochet and knit along, the spooky knit along. Um, yeah, so let's just get right into it. So if you don't know me, uh, my name is Kayleen and I am the principal fiber artist and independent yarn dyer of the Little Bean Crochet Shop on Etsy and the Little Bean Loves Hand Painted Yarn Line. Uh, you can find me on Etsy as littlebeancrochet.etsy.com and on Instagram mostly as uh, Little Bean Crochet and I'm on Ravelry as KM Weaver. We do have a Ravelry group for this podcast, so if you wanted to join up, that's how you will participate in giveaways and any knit or crochet alongs. We'll have some threads open so that everybody can get to know one another, the people who are enjoying this podcast. And I hope that you find it refreshing and something new to watch and something uh, that's a little a little more diverse. I know some knitting podcasts also do sewing, so that's really exciting. Um, so I'm happy to bring crochet and knit and other crafts here uh, into this arena. So um, welcome if you're a new viewer. I hope you enjoy and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Lots of love to you. Thank you for returning. So today we have a lot of things to go through. So I'm going to pull up um, my Instagram and we're gonna pull up Facebook and we're gonna pull up Ravelry. We are gonna pull up all the things here so that we are prepared for the stream and let me start with let's do works in progress okay so works in progress um i have per usual my sock that has not made a ton of progress i think i've done maybe three more rows on this sock i've just had to take a little break from it because it was hurting my eyes to um, stitch such a small gauge, but I've done a few more rows. It's looking more and more sock-like every week. Uh, this is in my Lighthouse Sunset colorway on my Everyday Sock Knees, which is a 75-25 Superwash Merino and Nylon Blend. And it's still, it's looking like a sock. It's looking, you know, like it's coming along. So that's one work in progress. The other work in progress I actually just started yesterday. This is another hook nook beanie. This is, you know, my favorite beanie to do. This is the Pretty Young Thing colorway by Lolo Did It that I hauled a few weeks ago. And I have double stranded the brim using a, just a plain, just plain undyed single ply. This was my frogged my frogged honey cow is becoming part of this hat. So I double stranded the brim and then I'm double stranding the puffs on the beanie using Pretty Young Thing, just pulling inside and outside. So the cake and pulling one strands coming from the outside and one side strands coming from the inside. So that's coming along nicely. This is this is a one day project. Usually I, you won't, usually you don't, won't see hacks from me as works in progress because well, they're really fast. But um, this I had to stop doing yesterday because we went out to a farm, a, a little, there's a small farm in a town by us that has a playground and a barn with some animals. So we went there yesterday, so I had to stop. This is being sized for Cecilia or a similar sized child. I'm not sure if I'll give this to her or if I will give it to a friend's daughter, but it pretty much looks like Lisa Frank just threw up all over this hat. Uh, <laughs> really, it is the most bright colorway that exists. It's beautiful. I love how it's stitching up. I'm really excited to see it finished. So what is out of my pot this week? So let's do a little dye talk. Um, I've been busy dyeing and I've been so busy dyeing and I've dyed so much, so many skeins um, that I ran out of citric acid. 
and I haven't been able to dye all week. I also ran out of uh, Eucalan, which is the wash that I use to clean, to wash the wool, to wash out the excess dye. Um, so I just got a huge jug of that and I got a huge 10 pound bag of citric acid, so I should be good for a while. But over the last week, I've done a couple of big dyes and they are the Harry Potter Trees series that I'm working on. So the first tree that I did, this is coming up pretty true to life. This is called Wigan Tree. It is a, a rowan tree uh, in the Harry Potter universe and it's magical. Its bark is used in the Wigan Weld potion, which wakes people from the draft of the living death. So this is Wigan Tree. It is a beautiful fall colorway. You can see there's some lovely purples and has mostly oranges, reds, purples, some green undertones in there. So it's dynamic. This is very dynamic skein in terms of color. So this should stitch up really beautifully. This is the, um, the MCN blend, the Lux blend. So it's beautiful. And then the other tree that I came up with, this is Elder Tree. So it's a beautiful blend of greens and browns and pretty much just greens and browns, different tones and variations of, of those colors. So it's also extremely dynamic but beautiful and it's kettle dyed. So these are truly variegated, they don't have any repeats, um, it's not a repeating colorway so it shouldn't pull very much but I think these are beautiful in their, in their set. Here, so I'm working on number three, which I asked on Instagram. If you don't follow me, you should definitely go follow me on Instagram, but I asked for your input on the next tree to come into this nice fall set. Um, and I'm thinking that willow will be next, maybe the Wamping Willow. Um, I was also thinking about Blackthorn, uh, some other trees that are used to make wands. You know, the wand chooses the wizard. So this is the beginning of the fall set so it, it was really fun to dye these um there are multiple layers i think there are four layers and maybe five or six colors on each of these skeins so they are extremely dense there are no undyed sections to these but they were super fun to um to dye up that being said i do want to say that with this colorway i had a little panic and emergency. So I worked on these skeins. It took me about four hours to dye, I think it was six, 12, 12 skeins. Uh, but it's very complicated colorways, many, many layers in it. They, they have to be, you know, pulled out of the pot, cooled, washed, dried, blah, 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 the whole thing. Like there's a whole bunch of many steps in here. So I spent pretty much the whole day working on these skeins in between taking care of the kids and doing my everyday life. Coming out of the final batch, like the final dry, and I'm ready to hang them on the drying rack, I had four skeins out of the 12. So two of my bases came out and I thought I had ruined the skeins. They were, they were, they felt sticky. So the fibers, when, when you normally feel a skein, you, you want to feel some level of springiness to the yarn. The yarn shouldn't be sticking to itself, especially a superwash wool. Uh, this is superwash cashmere and nylon. So this is merino. It has a very distinct feel. It's very soft, cuddleable. Like I just want to cuddle this all day. But I pulled two sets of skeins out of the dryer and they felt sticky, like the fibers were sticking together and I was just like, help me. I messaged some dyer friends and I said, please help, please, please. I think I ruined these skeins and everybody's like, there's no way you ruined them. They're super wash. I, you know, I'm rough with the super wash and I, I pull it in and out of the bath and it gets cooled off too quickly or whatever. And I, I never have a problem. So I'm like, how? In the heck did I ruin them? So I slept on it, woke up the next day, and I thought, hmm, maybe in all of the steps, these, these, because these four skeins were dyed in succession. So they were the last two to go through the whole process. So maybe they didn't get rinsed well, and maybe there's some citric acid left in the fiber. So what I did was Again, I've used a lot of citric acid and I've used a lot of wash in the last you know, week. 
and I rewashed thoroughly the skeins, spun them out to dry, and sure enough, they came out as soft and lovely as ever, and I was so relieved. I would have kept them to show color and to, to just to be able to show you what the different bases look like, but I was so worried that I ruined them and that I wouldn't even be able to stitch with them. <laughs> So if you're a dyer and you're going through and you're using superwash and you find that the texture of your skeins has changed from when you before you dyed them and then after you dyed them, make sure that you rinse them well and that you're paying attention to what you're doing and that you're, you're taking the time, soaking them, getting enough soap in there, rinsing out all the soap, all of the acid because the citric acid will change the texture of your yarn. So once it was all washed out, um, everything was totally fine. And if you ever receive a skein as a customer or a consumer of Indie Dye products and you find that uh, it feels a little sticky or crunchy or something is weird, uh, talk to the dyer, number one, and also try washing it out because sometimes things like that happen uh, by accident. It almost happened to me. So this is Elder Tree, isn't it gorgeous? I'm dying. Just love it. Okay, that was my dye talk for today. So let's get on to acquisitions. And so my acquisitions for this week, I have a few, uh, some that I, all of them I'm really excited about. So I told you a few weeks ago that I was interested in spinning. And so I ordered a spindle. It's a 3D printed spindle uh, from Lucky Pluck on Etsy. She's also a member of the yarn group that I'm a part of. And so I'm waiting for her spindle to come. It's a little bit of a waiting period, but in that time I've acquired a few things. One, I acquired some Superwash BFL from a D stash so I can dye on it and practice spinning with it and see if I like dyeing roving, uh, because I'm interested in dyeing roving and putting some of the colors into roving. But I also purchased some roving. So this is one purchase. This is uh, roving from Wendy's Wonders. She is an Etsy seller. She does a lot of gradient work that is just absolutely beautiful. Um, this is her roving that she dyed. This is just BFL, it's not super wash. It is, this was just around four ounces. And there's no colorway, but there's the number. So yellow, blue, purple, orange, green, that looks like the colors that she probably put into this skein. But it is like, it was fall in a braid. So you can see I've spun some. I don't have my normal spindle yet, but I will show you. So this is the braid that she sent to me. Well, I purchased and she sent me. It was the fastest shipping. It was here like in two days. So here it is. It's gorgeous. It's really soft. like. <laughs> I don't think I've ever felt fi like just plain fiber before because I've never, um, I didn't really have an interest in spinning until I started watching other people spin and I got into dyeing myself and like seeing how yarn was made and learning about different types of sheep and wool and all that stuff. And so I was like, I need this color. I need it. It is fall and it's beautiful. So I think I've spun through half of it and I will show you my Franken spindle. Yes, it's a Franken spindle. No, I don't care. I could not wait to practice spinning. This spindle is my Franken spindle. So this is made out of a chopstick, an earring, and a piece of Tupperware. That's it. <laughs> this is my spindle. My Franken spindle. It's crazy, it's crazy. So I couldn't wait to try. I replaced this, this had a much more flimsy plastic cover, so it was bending a lot. So I changed it out this morning and I re-glued in my, my hook here. So I didn't have any cup hooks. I had a chopstick and I had a plastic cover. So I had to go hunting for something I could use as a hook for my top whorl and that's what I found. So this is what I've spun so far. It's really awful. It's not awful. I mean, it's awful for spinning, 
it's very inconsistent and I'm just learning how to draft. I'm having a lot hard time drafting and understanding exactly how much I should be drafting because I'll talk about it in a second. So this was the first run that I did last night. Again, it's, it's, it's art yarn. I'm just calling it art yarn to make myself feel better. So I spun this little bundle. It's not set or anything, it's just tied up. And then this was the second bundle that I spun yesterday. It, it, it's a little better. It's a little more consistent. I think I'm getting like a, a worsted, worsted weight and up spin for the most part. Um, but I do have slubs in here and just areas that didn't twist right. I'm having a little bit of difficulty. So, um, but this batch came out better. And then this is the newest batch that I'm spinning today on my repaired spindle. And again, I'm still having trouble with, with the whole drafting process. So I take my spindle, okay, how am I wrapping this? I'm wrapping it like this, okay. So I'm taking my spindle and I'm spinning and then I'm pulling down and then letting the spin go into the fiber. But what I'm having a trouble with is learning about how much I should be drafting. And so I end up with these slubs in between, you know, this pretty decently spun yarn. And I am having trouble with, um, with drafting. So the difficulty I'm having, see, so like you can see, it goes thick and thin. Like this section looks great. This section, not so much. This section, pretty good, not so much. So I'm still learning. I'm just spinning this back on the spindle so it doesn't come off. Uh, but I couldn't wait to practice because I want to be able to do it well because I'm like that. Uh, the colors are beautiful. Like check out how it's spinning up. It's just gorgeous. You get these lovely like brindling of the, the colors like as the fibers blend together. I've been pulling. So like, you know, you can pull off the braid and have it, you know, grayed. Like here, there's some blue and then some yellow and then some red. But what I've been doing is, you know, pulling sections off. So I'll pull like, you can see how this is longer than this. So I've been pulling off sections of the fiber. So this is what I'm having trouble with is drafting. For some reason, it, I don't know if it's just a long staple length, like the fibers are just long. So I'm pulling off sections, spinning it, and then, um, and then um, words escape me. And then pulling more sections off, spinning it, winding it. So I'll show you how I've been spinning it. So I'm having trouble controlling my yarn. Oh good, this is good. I do have pants on, just so you know. <laughs> my shorts are like riding up my legs. So I'm going to unwind a little bit of this so I have a little give. Okay, so here's my spindle. I'm spinning counterclockwise. That's how I'm comfortable spinning. And then I have my spin and I'm parking and then I'm drafting up. So where I'm having problems is in the drafting part. So how hard do I have to press to get um, and pull like how I should be drafting. So this is actually one of the more consistent drafts that I've had. There we go. Um, so it's like, should I be pulling out like you want to be consistent in the amount of fiber that you're drafting out so that the yarn spins up. So like this was a nice section that I just spun, right? It looks pretty good. They're a little slubby, but it's not too bad. So now I'm going to wind it. And then hook it back on my hook. Grab another piece of this roving. So this is... I think it's classified as top. I'm still learning about all of this. This is still very new to me. So then I have my piece of roving and now I'm gonna join it by just 
overlaying the fibers. And then I'm going to spin counterclockwise, and then I'm going to draft up, park it, draft, and let the spin come into the fiber. So see, I got a slub, whoops, at the join. So I got a little slubby here. So I'm gonna stop the spin, draft, and then pull my fiber up. And let the spin go into the, into the fiber. And I don't want to overspin it because I've had that trouble too. So I park it, draft, let it spin, let the fibers spin together. Okay, so I have a lot of spin in here still. I'm going to try and pull some more fiber into this. Okay, park it. And I just go until I can't go any higher. Okay. So those are my two joins and they got slubby. But again, I'm still very new at this. And so I don't know if you can see it very well, how the colors blend together. It's getting a bit washed out. Um, these are beautiful deep navies and like a maroon purple. So it's not perfect, but it's my squishy. I will call him squishy. So that's what I've been doing. So if you're a spinner, if, you're, if you are in the spinning realm, Loon this off here. Um, stay, stay. Okay, so I've just secured it so that it doesn't come off. But you can see the colors are quite nice. Oh, it's getting so washed out. Okay, that's a little more accurate. So you can see like the red and the blue and the yellow kind of blend together. The fibers blend together. All right, so that's what I've been working on and spinning. And I'm very new, so please don't use me as an example. <laughs> I am still learning all the terms and the techniques and how to do it, but I could not wait for my nice spindle to come. And if I haven't put a picture up, I'm going to put up one right now because it is gorgeous. Um, it's a tree of life, which is so fun. And um, it is a 3D printed spindle. So it's you can use it as a top whirl or a bottom whirl spindle. You can assemble it in whatever way you'd like. But I feel pretty good about top whirl spindles. I like the, I like the balance of it even though this is not really a, this isn't really a real spindle, although it is a real spindle, I guess. Um, and I like being able to spin and getting a nice, like a nice uh, spin. <laughs> spin is the word. Spin is the word. Okay, and then other acquisitions that I have gotten, the lovely, lovely Melissa from Nitty by Nature has sent me some goodies. So as you know, we're having a little crochet and knit along in our Ravelry group of a spooky nature. It's very loose, very casual. Uh, if we have enough people, we're gonna do a little giveaway. But I was talking with Melissa and how much I love, I love her stitch markers. They're so cute. And um, I need to start my little collection because I need all the things. We got to chatting, she's so sweet. And she sent me two prizes. Two prizes. One I think I may use as a, a giveaway on my Instagram, but one I will use here. And they are spooky sets of stitch markers. So this one has an owl and a ghost and a witch's hat. And this one is more gory, so it has a skull and crossbones and some red rings and some fangs, which are just the best like so excited so um she sent me two of these to use as giveaway prizes thank you so much melissa you are the best as a little bonus she sent to me i was expecting to have just like you know like a stitch marker with my initial on it but she sent this to me this keeper ring and it is full of harry potter keychains <laughs> keychains they're not keychains they're uh progress keepers so she said to me, oh, what house are you? I said, oh, I'm Gryffindor. She said, oh, okay, cool. Um, there's gonna be a little something in there for you. And I was just blown away when I received this in the mail. I'm like, this is way more than I would have even expected or wanted and I, I'm so pleased. Now I can fill in this cute little keeper with the rest of the, the stitch markers that I want. But this, there's a little lion and a cat or a lion, yeah, for Gryffindor, and um, a witch's hat, and the castle. So it's in kind of Gryffindor colors. 
just up here like the little orange and yellow but this is really cool it's very it's very smart it's such a smart idea to have this ring be able to hold all of your stitch markers and progress keepers like who thought of this Melissa you are a genius you're a genius so for all your progress keeper needs you should head over to her shop it's the needy by nature shop Melissa is her name stitch markers are her game she is awesome so look out for those prizes I'm almost at 500 followers on Instagram, guys. So I think one of these sets I'm going to use as a prize on Instagram this week. So please keep your eyes out on my account. Like, look at this. She's so cute. Oh, and she sent me a button. This button. Oh. It's very reflective. But it's a little shapey. So this is going to go on my, my Molly Klein bag because it's just awesome. All right, so that is the end of those things. I don't have any finished objects. Uh -uh. Um, so sorry about that, guys. But I was busy with dyeing all week. It's been a crazy week. Kids are nuts. Tantrums all over. All right, so I'm going to pull up some questions. Okay, good. I didn't get any more. I got so many questions. I'm like, I'm not going to have enough time to answer all these questions. These questions. Okay, do I have any questions here? I do not. Do I have questions in the Ravelry group? Probably not. It's not a super active group yet. Um, I am still a Ravelry novice, I guess you could say. There's a lot, there's many things in Ravelry that I don't even know yet. Um, but we have some new folks in the group. We have 13 people in the group. So hi, <laughs> if you're watching everyone, thank you for participating in the Ravelry group. Um, I look forward to it growing and to being more, but I'm going to go to my Instagram because that's where I always get the most questions. So we're going to go to the ask me anything thread right now. And I said, you know, guys, if you don't know, here I am. And please ask me a question. So, Miss Crochet Cakes, well, she has her own podcast here on YouTube, Clarissa Beth. She asks me, have I finished the Water Reads hat? Uh, it looked like a really fun crochet. Was the pattern easy to follow? Technically two questions. Yes, that's two questions, but I will answer both. No, I did not finish it. Um, the only reason I didn't finish it was because I wasn't, I didn't have enough yarn. Um, the, and I didn't really care for the yarn. So the yarn I was using was Plymouth Yarn DK Superwash, but we only got a sample, a sample skein. So it was, I think, I don't even know if it was 50 grams, but at the local yarn shop, I worked down there. I am a crochet teacher there. So the owner, she said, oh, can you stitch up something with this and tell me if you like the yarn? So I sent her a text back that I was like, mm, I don't really care for this yarn. But, um... It was soft and everything, but I just didn't like it. I didn't like it for that project because the way the hat is constructed, it's in short rows and you're doing a lot of back loop stitching. So what ends up happening is if you're not careful, you end up splitting your yarn a lot. So it was especially apparent with this particular yarn that I was using. I just didn't care for that. So I am gonna redo it. I would like to finish the hat. It was an easy stitch. Once you got into the pattern, it was like, you know, you just go. There is a learning curve. Uh, a lot of Tara's designs, um, if you don't know who she is, Tara Murray, she is Mama Chi crochet designs on Ravelry uh, and Mama Chi, Mama Chi something on Instagram. I'll just put it on the screen. Um, she does a lot of short row projects and doing different techniques to make crochet look more like knit. So she has some very unique looking designs and so I feel with a lot of her patterns, once you get past the hump and the learning curve, it becomes a lot easier to do her patterns, but they just are gorgeous, gorgeous. So definitely, if you haven't seen her, you should check it out. She has um, some coupons on her patterns page, on her designer page. So if you purchase multiple patterns, you get a certain percentage off. So you should definitely check her out. Link will be down below um, and I'll put her information on screen. So no, I didn't finish it. Yes, I want to do it again. And yes, it was easy. Um, can you show how you hold your yarn when you crochet? This is Miss Sunshine Bubblegum of the Sunshine and Bubblegum podcast. Hey, girl. Um, she says, can you show how you hold your yarn when you crochet? I think I hold mine weird and it's starting to hurt my hand and arm. Hi. Hi. Mommy's busy. 
<laughs> All right, can you go play in the other room? I, I want to say hi. You want to say hi? Hi. 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 You want to wave? Everybody's watching you. Hi. Hi. Okay, what are you playing? Sesame Street? Cookie Monster? So, um, are you just going to sit there? <laughs> okay. So while Cecilia sits there, I am going to cut here to a clip of where I show you how I hold I my hook. I got one cookie. You got one cookie? One cookie. Okay, let's cut to that right. Hey guys. All right, so I'm clipping into this. I was asked to do a demonstration on how I hold my crochet work, uh, Miss Sunshine Bubblegum, uh, the Sunshine Bubblegum podcast. Um, she asked me in, for my Ask Me Anything section today to show how I hold my work. So I've just worked up a small swatch of half double crochets, which is my favorite crochet stitch. And I'm going to show you how I hold my needle. So I tend to hold my needle like a pencil, uh, with this finger controlling the stitch, this finger holding the needle at the grip mark. Uh, this is how I was always doing it. I don't think I've ever tried holding the needle this way when I was learning. I really just found this to be the most comfortable. So I'll stitch a row here. I'm not going to slow down. I'll just show you the speed of my stitching, which is pretty quick. Um, this Holding your yarn in this manner really does allow you to go as quickly as possible. This is why I knit continental style as well. Um, because I can hold the yarn in my left hand where I'm extremely comfortable. If I say comfortable one more time, you can smack me in the face, but <laughs> um, this is my most comfortable way. So I have my yarn tensioned uh, in my left hand, holding the project in my left hand as well. Uh, I try to hold as much of the project as I can in my hand so that I'm not having some cramping in my hands or fingers that's holding. The, the larger the project gets, the more difficult it is to hold. But for my needle, I'm using almost no tension when I'm holding my needle. So it is literally as light as air on my fingers. I do get cramping sometimes in my fingers, like right here, in this, these muscles here, from holding if I'm holding really tightly. But I tend to crochet a little loose, not loose, but I, I crochet a gauge, but I crochet in a way that has nice, even tension and stitch spacing. That usually falls true to whatever the gauge is for the project or for the yarn with the recommended hook. So this is how I crochet. There's really no wrong way to do it. It's really finding the way that is most comfortable for you to hold your needle, to get even tension, and to not be uncomfortable while you're stitching. That's what's most important. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, if you have any other questions or would like to see a tutorial on certain stitches or things that I've done, um, you can feel free to leave a comment below. And so now we will return to the me who is doing the podcast. All right, see ya. Okay, so we're back. I hope you enjoyed that little segue into the future past, into the past and then back into the future. Uh, I filmed that a little bit before I was filming this just so I could get it in and done. But if you have other questions for me about how I crochet and the techniques I use or different types of stitches, let me know down below in the comments or on Instagram, Ravelry, wherever you'd like to contact me and I'm happy to include it here in the podcast. All right, so we have a couple more questions here. Miss Melissa from Nitty by Nature has left me a lovely question. Hi, Melissa. Um, what's the fastest way to wind mini skeins? I've got swaps coming up and I need to put some together. So the fastest way to do it um, is here on your arm. Um, you can just take your yarn, if you have it wound into a ball, you can literally go from your thumb to your elbow and up and wind it several times. Um, I guess it depends how big of a mini skein you're looking to do. If you really want to just crank them out on your arm, that's the easiest way. If you don't have a Nitty Knotty, Nitty Knotties are great tools to use as well. You can either purchase one that's already um, made, like a commercial one, like an Ashford Nitty Knotty, which is the one that I have, or you can make one out of PVC piping and just have it set at a certain distance so that you can have a certain size mini skein. Uh, my Nitty Knotty from 
top to bottom, just one wrap around is one yard. So that the full circumference is a yard, and if I do the double, it's two yards. So that's the fastest way for me that I wind mini skeins. Some folks have commercial skein winders, but I'm not a large enough entity to can that can afford to purchase a, a commercial skein winder or a meter. So I usually am counting out um, like winds of my nitty naughty. So if I'm doing a a 20 gram skein, I know that that's about 93 yards. So if I'm doing a one a one um, circle, so like this height, half a yard height, one yard circumference, I'm winding 93 times. So I'm just counting up. For me, that's the fastest way. All right, Miss Sarah RN0714 on Instagram asks me, is that my colorway in the picture? If so, what is it? My colorway, meaning is this your colorway? Yes, so if you haven't seen the picture, this is the picture I posted up today. Um, it is my colorway. It is Never Say Die. It is on the Simple Sock base, which is 100% Superwash Merino. That's my color. Uh, it comes out really cool. All right, Fiber Addict 71 says, I didn't even know you had a podcast. Oh, well, now you do. And I hope you watch and I hope you enjoy. Uh, I recently over dyed a skein with black and spent so much time rinsing and rinsing. So my question is, what is the best way to work with black and not have all the excess to worry about rinsing? All right, so I don't know a lot about what you did or what type of dye you used um, or how much dye you used. So if you're looking to over dye a skein, you're using a natural protein fiber and you're using an acid dye, you're using citric acid to set your dye heat to, so either you know steamed on the stovetop or in boiling, not boiling water, but almost boiling water to set the color. Um, you should not have a problem with excess dye if you're not using too much dye. So I have a couple questions for you and if you wanna PM me, that's totally fine and I'm happy to chat about it with you but is how much dye did you use and did you remember to set it with citric acid and steam? Um, if you're looking to get a true black, like the deepest black you possibly can, you do need to technically over dye the yarn. So you are dyeing the yarn and waiting for the color to exhaust and all the color that can possibly be in the skein is in the skein. You may or may not have black left over in your pot. Um, my darkest color that I've dyed recently is the dark black to gray gradient set, the gray lady that I showed last week. Even the darkest black that I was able to get is still not as dark of a black as I would like to see it, but I did have dye left over in the pot. But when I was rinsing and washing the yarn, there was no fallout of dye. So if you're having a lot of excess dye coming out, like it's physically bleeding as you're washing it and you're watching all this dye come out, then you may have a problem with setting of your color. Um, if you want to send me a PM, that's great, or we can even breach that type of a topic on another podcast or as a specific video about how, what to do about bleeding yarns. Uh, we just recently had a nice on-topic post by a member of the group I'm in, the fiber group that I'm in, and um, it was actually really a nice, it was a nice consensus of a post, and maybe I can do an interview with her or something of that nature, but if you're having lots of bleeding after you're dying and it's just continually bleeding and bleeding and bleeding, you may have a problem with how you set the color if you didn't use enough acid or if you um, didn't heat set it enough. Even at the deepest setting, if the color doesn't fully exhaust, you still shouldn't have a ton of bleeding when you're washing your yarn. You should be able to you know, wash your yarn. If you have a slight tint to the rinse water, that's okay. You just keep washing it until you pretty much have nothing left and then you know that the wash, it's color fast or as color fast as it can be. You know, certain dyes like blacks do bleed a little more. Uh, reds are notorious bleeders uh, and that's because of the, of the amount of saturation you need. So I hope I answered that okay. Check, make sure you have enough citric acid. Make sure you're setting your yarn well and you're gonna have some bleed out from black. It's just to be expected, but it shouldn't be a ton. So that's the answer to your question. Um, and then the last question I actually just got while we were in that little crochet hiatus from Miss Peggy. So hi Peggy, I'm glad you're enjoying the podcast. Thanks for coming back. Um, she
she is just watching, she's just beginning watching now. Fortunately, you don't have like hundreds of episodes to watch. It's only a few, so I hope you enjoy. Um, she said, um, I'm on episode two, enjoying the part about how you came to hand dyeing after crocheting with commercial yarns. Oh, thank you. So yeah, I did touch uh, on a, in episode two about my frustrations with commercial yarns or craft store yarns. And that's really how I came to want to dye my own stuff and to start really focusing on using others independently dyed stuff because it just frustrated me to no end. Those new Karen cakes that came out, I don't know if everybody's heard of them. If you're a crocheter and you're like, oh my God, it's a gradient. But it's not really a gradient. Let me just say, there's a lot of harsh transitions that happen in those cakes. You may start stitching with it, expecting to have this beautiful gradient. You're gonna be disappointed. So let's talk about that just for one second. We are running up around 40 minutes and I don't wanna go too far over 45 minutes, but a true gradient you will not be able to tell well exactly where one color begins and another color ends. There should never be an abrupt line. Um, that's part of the reason why I don't like commercial variegated skeins because each color is just like block, 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 block. And you have these harsh transitions and in crochet, it stands out so badly like a sore thumb. So if you're crocheting with those Karen cakes and you're working on a hat and you're like, oh, this is gonna be so cool. You get to the next color, it is gonna be this flat out just boop, Here's yellow, here's blue, and that's all it's gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna put a picture of a gradient that I've done. Um, Miss uh, Tina, she did this shawl. This is the Classy Bitch Shawl by Mama Chi. No big surprise, woman crush. Uh, but she used my shell cottage gradient. There are four colors in this gradient. Not once do you see a harsh line of where one color begins and another color ends. She worked two skeins together alternating uh, different rows to be able to do this. Uh, this is a two skein project. So she took two gradients, blended them together, and it looks gorgeous. It looks like a beach. And that's what it should look like. That's a gradient. So if you're interested in gradients, you should check out other independent dyers. You should check out my yarns. I have gradients as well. But it never should start or stopped, stop abruptly. It should not be one stitch is one color and then the next stitch is the next color. It will look awful in your final project. That's it. <laughs> That's all I really have to say. If you're allergic to wool, you can find other dyers who do it. Wendy, who's, who did this roving, Wendy's Wonders, let me show her card again. She does beautiful, beautiful gradients. Wendy's Wonders, she's on Etsy. This was the colorway that I had, but here's her contact information. I'm gonna put her information below. You will not go wrong if you order a gradient from her. You will not, you will not, because they are just done so incredibly well, so incredibly well. Skip the Karen cake, get some independent yarn, because that's really what is mattering. That's really, you're gonna pay for the quality that you get. If you, if you buy Red Heart for a dollar a skein, you're gonna get the quality of a dollar a skein. That's just, that's just how it is. All right. And I don't have any other questions there. I don't have any questions in there. And I don't, excuse me. Okay, so I don't have any other questions. I've gone on a tangent about how much I hate Karen yarn. Sorry about that, if you love Karen yarn. I just don't love it. <laughs> I don't love their variegated work. I just don't, I just don't. And I think these Karen cakes ideas, like, oh, it's so fancy, it's in a cake. You can put any you can put any yarn in a skein. You can put any yarn in a cake. It doesn't make it a better yarn. It still is acrylic yarn, and it still is going to have the problem that we're seeing with the gradient. Is that the gradient is not actually a gradient? It is a abrupt stop between colors. That's not a true gradient. This is a gradient. This is not a gradient. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. So. That is all I really have for you today. I hope I didn't bore you too much. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. So keep your eye on my Instagram. I am at 499 followers. When I hit 500 followers, I'm doing a giveaway on Instagram and I think I'm going to give a skein of yarn away and I am going to give one of these little crochet, um, knitting stitch markers away 
as a thank you to all of you who are following me and are supporting my little mom made business. I super appreciate it. You guys are the reason that I'm able to do what I'm doing right now. So thank you very, very much. Um, one more note of things upcoming. So my Halloween pre-orders closed on the 13th and I will be drawing the winner of the um, Halloween colorway giveaway. Uh, the people who did a pre-order with me are were entered into a drawing that you could win one skein of my yarn, whatever color you'd like. So I'm going to draw that and announce it on my Instagram. I think I'll announce it this week so that I can get the person's dyed and dried and shipped out with their uh, Halloween color purchase. So be on the lookout for that as well. If you purchase a skein of yarn from me from pre-order, I will be drawing that this week on Instagram. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, that's it. That's everything. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Enjoy your weekend. And I will see you next Tuesday. Bye.